everyone, my name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today we are going to be diving into the wide wonderful world of blindfolds and hoods in BDSM. For those of you who are already familiar with my work, you probably realize this is a continuation of my BDSM 101 series where I talk about all sorts of introductory concepts to BDSM like how to talk to your partner about kink or how to get started in power exchange. So if you do have those questions, I highly recommend you check out some of my other videos in the BDSM 101 playlist down below. But like I said today, we are going to be focusing in on blindfolds and hoods. And I am in particular really excited for today's topic because hoods and blindfolds in particular are used as shorthand in so many BDSM films. It's such a common, common tool in BDSM, but like so many things, it's not always what meets the eye pun very much intended there. And there's just so much to know when it comes to hood and blindfold. So today we are going to be talking about what these things are, why people like them, how you can use them in a scene, different types that are out there, safety concerns, all of that good stuff. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around because we're going to go ahead and get into it. So the first thing that I usually like to do in these videos is to start out with a definition of what these things are and why people enjoy them. Because especially if this is your first time kind of exploring BDSM or you are getting introduced to new kinks that maybe aren't something you're naturally driven to explore, it can be kind of hard to understand why people might enjoy certain things or what certain people might get out of it. So I like to just make sure that everybody's kind of on the same page about that before we get too far into the topic. So what is a blindfold? Well, for people who are not otherwise familiar, a blindfold is basically any object that is going to go over the eyes with the goal of obscuring sight to some degree. Blindfolds vary based on their material how much they obscure sight from just like barely making it a little bit harder to see up to total and complete loss of sight. So it, it does vary a whole lot, but basically it's anything that's going to be going over the eyes. Different styles might also go over and incorporate the nose to various degrees, but that's basically what it is. Why do people like blindfolds? Well, there's a couple of reasons for this. For some people, blindfolds are very comforting. They provide the ability to kind of focus in on the scene, not get distracted by the things that are going on in the background. They just kind of produce a, a sense of calm, a sense of comfort in the same way that like a weighted blanket might or like blinders on a horse. They're just very like cozy to be able to have that reduction in, in sight. The same way that closing your eyes in meditation might, it helps you kind of focus in, get in tune with what is going on in your body. And in particular, because you have either completely or partially removed one of your senses, your other senses are going to get heightened in turn. So that means that your sense of touch might be more acute, you might be more honed in on what your ears are hearing, you might have other things in your body that just naturally get more heightened and this can be used for a great effect in a wide variety of scenes. So obviously it can make senses of you know other objects on your body, be that a flogger or ice or a feather tickler, it can all make those things more intense, which particularly when you're getting into experimenting with deeper forms of play, having a way to focus in on those sensations can be quite useful. It can also be a way of building anticipation because you can't see what's happening. It can make people feel excited. It can make people feel anxious or nervous, which for some people is positive. And it helps just kind of shut out other things that are going around in the world. And this is also something I haven't seen talked about very often, but it can actually be very beneficial for the dominant or the top partner as well because when your submissive or your bottom is blindfolded, you might have less inhibition about what's going on. You might be able to kind of focus in more on exactly what you're doing without actually worrying about what it looks like. Now, this is not to say that blindfolds or hoods for that matter are a positive for everybody. For some people, they can do things like provoke feelings of claustrophobia. It can make people feel overly anxious or fearful. And we'll get more into that when we do talk about some of the risks associated with this type of play. But it is something to check in with your partner about. And many people do have positive experiences while using blindfolds. 
hoods are very similar. Basically what a hood is, is rather than just incorporating the eyes, it's something that's going to go over basically all of the head in varying portions of the face. Some hoods basically go over like the ears and the top of the head and the hair, and that's the only thing that they cover. Other styles of hoods might cover the mouth or the eyes or the nose or all three of these or a combination thereof. They come in a wide variety of styles and I would say that for the most part, hoods kind of play on a specific theme that blindfolds can do. It's a often cited bit of pop psychology, which I'm not sure is entirely accurate, that says that people who wear hoods or masks feel less constrained by social pressure. They are more likely to act in ways that their normal non-costume selves might do. And so for that reason, a lot of people enjoy wearing hoods because it helps them tap into a different persona. It helps them feel like something other than what they are in everyday life. So for somebody who say a pro dom, wearing a hood can help you step into that particular aspect of your personality. For people who enjoy role play, particularly animal role play, hoods can play a very big role in helping to tap into that animal headspace, that animal frame of mind that you might have. For other people, hoods offer a higher degree of sensory deprivation, but that is a pretty long explanation. Hopefully that gave everybody a pretty good understanding of what these things are. Now let's start out by talking about the different types of blindfolds that are out there. The first most common type of blindfold you'll probably see is the classic fabric or silk blindfold. These are basically strips of fabric that could be silk, that could be a tie, that could be a dish towel, something that's basically a strip of fabric that goes over the eyes and manually ties in the back. They don't normally have a lot of bells and whistles. They're very commonly just like DIY materials from around the house. And so for this reason, they make pretty good introductory toys because you probably have the supplies in your house right now to be able to find one. The disadvantage is probably mostly that they, they don't always feel very comfortable because it bunches up the fabric that can compress particularly into the temple area and around the knot in the back of the head. If you want to do anything while you're lying against something or down against the bed, having that big knot can be very uncomfortable as well as very easy to tighten them too much, which can even make people experience headaches in some cases from wearing them too tightly. But overall, they're pretty good introductory toy, even if they're not the most perfectly, uh, you know, ergonomic around the eye area, let's say. And so for that reason as well, they tend to let in more light and be less sight obscuring than some other forms of blindfolds out there. The next most common type I would say is the sleep mask style of blindfold. These basically kind of go around, you know, like a sleep mask does. They may reach out onto the nose in different areas. Some fully cover the nose with like little grommets put in place for the nostrils. Some kind of just go over the bridge of the nose, sort of like a pair of glasses. Some go all the way down. This, it really depends based on style, but they're all basically a sleep mask style blindfold. Now these will typically lay flat across the eyes. So that means depending on kind of the shape of, of your eyeballs in your skull. They may let in light, particularly through here or through the outer corner of the eyes, again, depending on your anatomy. So they may not be a complete way to obscure sight as well. Because they are flat, they can also compress against the eye, the eyelid. This can feel various levels of just kind of a mild annoyance to very, very uncomfortable. However, these are oftentimes purpose made. They can be a lot more comfortable than something that's just, you know, from your kitchen cabinet it at home. They tend to be more adjustable, more versatile, made from more fetish oriented materials like leather. And compared to some of the other models out there, they tend to be a little bit less expensive and you can get them just from innocent vanilla travel shops. And for that reason, they can often be very nice for kinky travel. The next style of blindfold out there would be the molded blindfold. I kind of consider these a separate category because they can be made in various different ways. I would consider them like the vastly superior and evolved cousin from the standard sleep mask blindfold because basically what these are is rather than merely being constructed out of flat fabric that's laying like this, they're actually sort of cupped 
against the eyes, which makes them much more comfortable to wear. It makes them so you can actually fully open your eyes in a lot of cases whilst they're wearing the blindfold. So they're a lot more sustainable to wear because again, they are ergonomic. They are going to be rounded around, you know, the areas of the face. They are going to be at least in my experience, the best way to eliminate as much light as possible, be able to reduce sight as much as possible. And again, they are a lot more comfortable. These come in a wide variety of styles. My personal favorite is two very different models on two very, very different price points. You can find on Amazon for probably $10 or less, a great blindfold that is adjustable with Velcro, no bells, no whistles, just a standard molded eye, travel sleep mask works freaking great as a blindfold. I still have one that I use all the time. It's fantastic. Now, if you want to go something that's a little bit more BDSM related, that has a lot more bells and whistles, Scott Paul Designs makes one that is completely cupped around the eye, it has a little bit more of like a boxy shape to it, and it has some extra features on it, like for example, a little post in the center that you can actually use to incorporate into bondage. Now, another type of blindfold out there that's very popular that is very specifically, as far as I know, BDSM created is the aviator or the cat eye style blindfold. This is similar to the sleep mask style blindfold and that it lays flat across the eyes, but rather than being like a continual piece that travels basically from like the upper cheek around the brow bone and like down around the other side and across the nose. These are basically like two circles that kind of sit on either eye like this and then are connected across the bridge of the nose and around the back of the head with leather. Usually these come with some kind of buckling mechanism or snaps and while I think for some people they're probably more comfortable than a standard sleep mask, I find they're not really any more effective at letting light not penetrate through and they're not any more effective in terms of comfort. And so while I think they do have these distinct BDSM look to them, they're not necessarily the most effective type of blindfold out there and they do have a particular look to them. So if you like the aesthetic, that's totally, totally okay. Now, the last category that I want to bring up is the partial blindfold or the sight obscuring blindfold. These are basically any types of blindfolds which don't necessarily fully obscure your sight. So that might be lace or that might be lycra in some cases, that might be mesh, that might be like a clear PVC or a clear plastic, that is basically any kind of fabric that doesn't completely obscure your sight. It could also be something like a blind contact lens, which I've tried on before, and in those cases, rather than fully getting rid of your sight, it's basically making it a little bit harder to see. But basically, they're still technically blindfolds because they go around the eye, but rather than having the express purpose of completely getting rid of sight, they're more about altering, altering your ability to see completely. My favorite type of toy here that I have, it's actually one of my like top five favorite toys, is also by Scott Paul Designs. It's based on their cupped blindfold design, but it's made with a clear plastic. So it basically has almost like a drunk goggles-like effect to it, where you can see things, you can perceive the amount of light coming through, but it's very, very hard to see anything clearly. And it's just a great thing you can incorporate into so many different types of scenes. So speaking of which, how can you use blindfolds as part of your scene, especially as a beginner? Well, as I've already hinted at, blindfolds are great for using as part of a scene to build anticipation and let go of any fears you might have about how you look while you're doing something. So I would really highly consider using a blindfold as part of an introductory scene, particularly one that is easy to remove quickly, especially because some people do have very strong reactions to blindfolds where you can use it as a way uh, of maybe engaging in some kind of sensory play or sensory deprivation play, where in addition to maybe running ice over somebody's body or using a feather tickler, having that blindfold, again, can help build anticipation for each sensation as it comes along. It can help you, especially if you are the top or the dominant, feel more confident and more comfortable with what you're doing. 
and for the submissive I think as well having the blindfold can be something that helps them center in and learn to focus on particular sensations. One particular type of play that I think is really fun to do when you're experimenting with blindfolds and sensory play as a newer person would be to have a scene where the submissive is aware of like every single object that you have on a table and you say this is all the objects we're going to use you negotiate to make sure that everything's okay you're not going to cause allergies something along those lines and like okay so over the course of the scene i'm going to use every single one of these objects and it's your job to guess which ones i'm using at what time and then maybe you can build in if you want to some kind of maybe power exchange element based on like right or wrong guesses it's a good thing you can build over time it can help build a relationship again especially if you are also experimenting with power exchange and with blindfolds as well they can be great on a scene almost on their very own you can do something like have a blindfold and just have the submissive like stand there blindfolded and they are expected to stand at attention and practice discipline while being blindfolded and if you see them move or try to take off the blindfold then they get some kind of punishment again there's lots of ways that you can incorporate blindfolds into a scene depending on what your individual interests and motivations for being in a bdsm are now, the last thing i want to cover with blindfolds are safety concerns because it would not be an evie lupine video without talking about the safety concerns i think blindfolds are one of those toys where they're mostly innocuous a lot of people don't really particularly think they're super dangerous but there are a few things mentally and physically to be aware of because some people like with gags have a very visceral reaction to them for some people rather than being like calming or giving them like a positive sense of anticipation it makes them really anxious it makes them feel really claustrophobic it makes them feel uncomfortable it makes them feel out of control they don't like it they don't want it and so if you do a scene with a blindfold with somebody who's not really sure especially how they're going to be feeling about it it makes sense to do something that's easy to remove and to proceed with caution because that kind of thing can happen as well because that kind of reaction can occur during any type of play at any point in time because panic reactions sometimes just happen it's part of life it's part of experimenting with the dark parts of the brain you should always make sure you have something that you can use to cut off a blindfold particularly a pair of safety shears because if you're experimenting with something that's like homemade and has a big knot in the back you don't want to be there like fighting trying to untangle this knot that you've made in the dish towel while your partner is screaming get it off me get it off me get it off me like just have something there so you can cut it off right away and it's not even going to be an issue the big thing physically with blindfolds to keep in mind is they alter your ability to perceive the world around you i know big big shock because it's reducing your ability to see but when you can't see it makes it very difficult to move with confidence to remember how you're oriented in a room it makes it very difficult to know kind of where dangerous things are so for that reason be extremely cautious if you're going to be in a situation where somebody wearing a blindfold is expected to move freely sharp objects the corners of tables staircases all things to be aware of because you don't want somebody to crack their head open or fall down the stairs and that's something that you probably want to avoid if it's at all possible anyways i think that's enough about the safety concerns with blindfolds overall they're a relatively safe form of play they're relatively low risk but there are some particular things you need to keep in mind because somebody falling and tripping while they're wearing a blindfold and cracking their head open on a table is probably not the kind of thing you want to do your first time having a scene now let's go ahead and get into hoods hoods i would consider to definitely be a relative to blindfolds however i think they can actually be used for a wide variety of purposes a lot of which blindfolds aren't able to do one of the big classic types of hoods is the gwendolyn hood i've not actually ever heard that pronounced out loud so i'm not 100 percent sure i'm saying that right but basically this is a really classic type of hood that was introduced through bondage art and it is a style of hood that is almost completely open-faced and it goes around the head and the hair and covers up the mouth but the nose and the eyes 
are visible. So this can be really great if you're somebody who is in to service or into discipline because it can restrict speech, it can partially restrict hearing, but you still have your eyes and your nose free. So you're able to still interact with the world in a lot of ways, you're able to see what you're doing. And so for a lot of people, I think in addition to it being a very classic sort of fetish icon, it's something that is a little bit more accessible than say a, a full face mask. Now, another type that is closely related to the Gwendolyn hood is the open face hood. This is very similar in style in a lot of cases, but rather than covering the mouth, it goes completely around the head and actually leaves the mouth open. This is good for a variety of purposes. For some people, this has more of a dom or a dominatrix type connotation to it because it leaves all of the mouth free. It can be something that is very severe looking in some cases because it can frame around the face in such a way where it gives you a very angular jawline and a very angular chin. It can be something that is kind of a connotation of power. It can also give off a little bit of like wrestling vibes sometime for some people. If you're somebody who is a bottom or a submissive who is interested in using hoods as a way of accessing headspace, I would really recommend trying open-faced hoods because the only thing that it's really doing is maybe partially obscuring your hearing. It's leaving everything else free and not also allows you to do things like add in other objects like gags and head harnesses and nose hooks and blindfolds and it allows you to really mix and match and get a lot of variety around the hood. However, for a lot of people, it does have more of a top or a dom vibe to it. And on the flip side from the Gwendolyn hood, you have the open mouth or the open airway hood. Rather than covering up the mouth, this is going to cover specifically the top half of the face, the nose and the eyes both, or just the eyes and leave the nose and the airway free. If you are somebody who wants to incorporate gags or something else into a scene, having access to this can be really great. It can also be good for people who maybe have breathing problems that would be worried about having their airways restricted. And it can be really good if you wanna do things involving sexual play with the mouth while you're wearing a hood. And it incorporates the blindfold feature as well. I think as you're getting more into the eye covering style of hoods, these tend to have a little bit more of a connotation of helping develop a specific persona or develop kind of a different identity while wearing the hood. This doesn't happen with all people, but I think kind of the more restriction you have around the face, the more that's likely to happen. Now, the most extreme form of hood would be the gimp mask or the full face mask or hood. And basically what this does is it covers the entire face. This would be the eyes and the nose and the mouth and the ears. And these come in a wide variety of styles because they are a very, very popular fetish object. Some of them come just like completely as they are basically with like a little grommet for like the nose and the nostrils and that's basically it. Some of them have like detachable parts where where you can either have the mouth open or covered or the eyes open or covered. Some of them are incorporated with other things like chains or, or extra like D-rings or something so you can attach bondage elements to them. Some have incorporated pieces to be used with say like funnels or having like a particular style I've seen from Mr. S is one where it has built in mitts on the side over the ears. So not only are you incorporating the head and the face, but you are also incorporating the ears and the hands that way as well. So there's lots of variety when it comes to total face masks. These are again, the most extreme form of masks. They are not for everybody. They can cause claustrophobia. They can make people feel panicked. Some of them as well do have the ability to tighten our, around the throat. They have built-in collars, something like that. So they can be a lot more secure. Oftentimes they will also have locking features to them as well. But for people who are really into sensory deprivation, who like the depersonalization aspects of using a hood, the get mask or the full face mask is definitely the way to go. And now something that's very similar to a full face mask, but is quite different in construction would be the sack. And this is something like a pillowcase or burlap or a leather like bag, something that is basically a bag that you put over the head 
and it is meant to completely restrict sight. I think this is good for people who want to do something that's a little bit maybe more like CNC focused or based on interrogation or fear play because I mean there's so many movies that show like kidnapping and it's like and then the kidnapper put the sack over her head and then tied it down and then she couldn't see what was happening and, uh, and like I think it, it brings up a lot of those connotations for people which if you want to tap into that with play you absolutely can also super easy diy at home you can use the pillowcase that you have off of your bed and there you go it's something that you already own you don't have to go and pay you know 200 dollars for it it's already right there super convenient however these have a few particular safety issues slash disadvantages to them one is that depending on the fabric it's made from it really really reduces breathability and depending on how it's secured around the head because that's something you have to do because it's not like conformed around the head unless you trust your submissive or bottom to just not bend over and take it off uh it's uh it, it's something where it can very easily lead to a lack of airflow that can make people feel panic and if they're hyperventilating that might make them feel faint it might make them pass out that's always something that you probably want to try and avoid so be mindful of the types of fabric you are using and how you're using it in the scene if you are unsure about how breathable something is do little trial runs with it first before you have it be a big part of a total scene. On the other side of it as well, like I mentioned, there is the securing factor to having the hood on, which would mean you're probably tying it down with something, either a collar over it or rope, or have you even seen like zip ties, which I probably wouldn't recommend. But depending on how you're actually securing it down around the face, if that's something you're doing, that can also lead to easy panic responses. It can make it more difficult for people to breathe. And it's just something that you need to be aware of and something you should always be mindful of whenever you're putting something that is obscuring potentially somebody's ability to have full and complete airflow as they normally would. Now, this brings me to the last type of hood I'm going to be covering in this video, which would be the animal or the pet play hood. These are almost like the weird offshoot from all kinds of hoods because they are very, very much their own thing that in a lot of ways kind of have their own culture. They range from everything from like a head harness that has ears on it to a full face mask. They can be hyper realistic or super cartoony and everything in between. They might be neoprene or leather or PVC. They can be so many different types of materials as well, cover the face to varying degrees. But I think compared to something like say uh, a gimp mask or an open airway mask that is primarily about like sensory deprivation and creating a separate persona, it is similar to it in that it is about kind of tapping into a different headspace but compared to something like that they tend to focus in a lot of ways more on making sure the person can still see while wearing the mask because usually when people are are wearing some kind of animal mask or pet play mask they are rather than trying to like focus in on a specific sensation and like being tied to a St. Andrew's cross, they're usually active and playing with things and engaging in something. And so for that reason, not restricting the senses as much is often something that is built into these particular pet play or animal style hoods. They are great, as you might guess, for being able to access a particular role play headspace. That is usually their main function. Also just for costuming in general, if you have a fetish or a kink around wearing certain clothing or gear, that can also definitely be part of it as well. But it almost needs like its whole own separate video because animal role play and pet play and all of these things are something that can be very very separate in a lot of ways from other types of BDSM play. Now the last thing that I want to touch on is some scene recommendations if you are considering using a hood or how you might be able to incorporate it into your play. And I would in some ways not necessarily consider a hood to be a strictly 101 type of item. Now I have mentioned Zentai hoods, which I think are a really great option. Basically something that's made out of a simple Lycra is fantastic. But I think if you're interested in using a hood, it's important to consider kind of why you want to use a hood in the first place. If you are looking to experiment more with just like 
sensory deprivation and feelings of helplessness or, or a sense of calm in a scene or centering. Blindfolds, I think, are probably a better place to start with because they're easier to use, they're cheaper, so on and so forth. I think if I was considering a hood primarily as an aspect of a scene, I would maybe consider it if I was more interested in that depersonalization or role play aspects. Or if you're already experimenting with things like blindfolds and you want to take that to the next level, hoods can be good for that as well. So basically how I would plan on using a hood in a scene is if you are doing a sensory deprivation scene, kind of start out with like a baseline sensory deprivation scene or a sensory scene that you already know works really well and use a hood instead of what you typically would have been using for your normal, like your blindfold or gags, kind of use a hood instead of that, kind of experiment with it, see how well that works. Then if you want to do something that's more of a role play focus, more of depersonalization focus, you can definitely use that as well. And then like a blindfold here, I might recommend it be kind of the standalone item in the scene. Maybe focus on things like posture training or listening to commands and have the hood kind of be the only object in there so you can really focus in on how it's making you feel, how it's affecting how you interact in scenes those sorts of things. One last little note that I really, really wanna make sure I bring up here is nonverbal safe words. If you are doing something like a hood where you are obscuring the mouth in some way, it can be very difficult to actually hear somebody say a safe word. So if you haven't already, I do recommend if you want to use those types of hoods that you have a nonverbal safe word. I would also, if you are doing something like a blindfold, really, really make sure because eyes are one of the key ways that we communicate with other people. You practice reading nonverbal body language that you listen and look for other cues in a scene to kind of read how your partner is doing because you would be surprised. Once a blindfold is on, it can oftentimes turn into a lot more of guesswork about how somebody is actually experiencing a scene and if they're actually having a good time. So anyways, that's everything I wanted to talk about today. Hopefully you found this video interesting and helpful. If you did, let me know down in the comment section below, leave a like on this video, all of that good stuff. If you are looking for more videos like this, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. I make videos twice a week about all sorts of BDSM subjects. Now, if there's a area of BDSM that you haven't seen me cover yet that you'd like to see a video on, you can leave it as an idea down in the comment section below. And finally, if you really enjoy my content, if you like these videos, if you'd like access to exclusive content like extra videos that I can't have on YouTube or a Discord chat or one-on-one -on -one help or becoming a pen pal, all that is available on Patreon. Link to that will be down below. That is what makes this channel possible. If you do already support me on there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me and until I see you guys next time I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week bye bye